Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Greg Jeleno, who's the Executive Vice President at American Senior Benefits. Greg, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Hey, I'm looking forward to talking with you because I know that you guys have some exciting things going on in your organization, helping advisors with their marketing and positioning and just getting more impact in their communities for their clients. So I want to learn all about what you do, but give us a little bit of your background yourself as well as uh, American Senior Benefits. Sure. Uh, thanks, Mike. The uh, I've been in business for 37 years, um, started as an agent at 21 and, um, you know, kind of had every position along the way and and uh just had a wonderful career really enjoyed myself um especially the later years now uh, in, in my career giving back more in some of the roles that they've been able to have to be able to kind of impact others um to be able to uh kind of have the same success in the business that i've been able to enjoy and been blessed with and um our company uh, one of the things i'm so excited about talking about today is american senior benefits because um, we really truly believe, you know, we offer the finest opportunity industry today, not only for agents, but also people who want to get into management and, and own their companies. And uh, so I, I love that in terms of uh, the opportunity that we have here. And we've been we've been in the business, uh, really, we started in 2005. So this is our 17th uh, year in a row, uh, where we're going to hopefully, uh, I, I see us experiencing again, record growth for 17 straight years now, and uh, continue the process of really just doing what we do best, which is putting people back in the people business. You know, I, I love that intro because, you know, it's kind of like um, if you have a great year and then a horrible year and then a good year and then an okay year, it's like if you've had growth, but not only growth, but record growth, that says you, you're doing some things right internally for your um, advisors and your network because otherwise – and you're going to have some hiccups in the system. So that says a whole lot there. So I love that. What is what are some of the main points that you're serving your advisors with? Uh, what is some of the main suite of services that you're bringing to them? Good question. So I think, Mike, I've always said um, that we have really a four-pronged value proposition. So there's so much more depth than just that. But the four prongs that I always talk about are that we offer over 200 um, you know, top carriers so that our agents are able to do the best job uh, by their clients on every single appointment and be able to kind of win at the kitchen table, as we like to say. And I think that's important, especially in these times where, you know, just offering, you know, your quote unquote products, one company, one, one set, um, you're not really, uh, in my estimation, to always doing the best job for the client. You're kind of fitting a square peg in a circle hole at times. And so we're able to, like I said, always try to put the uh, the client in the best position by making sure our agents are in the best position in terms of recommendations. Uh, the second thing is we offer some of the best compensation to the business. Uh, you got to pay people fairly these days um, uh, to make sure that they're, you know, they're getting what they deserve based on the efforts that they're putting in. And so, you know, uh, I always say, you know, everything needs to be fair. Fair doesn't mean equal. Uh, and so that's key. Along with that, we have some of the best marketing out there, um, exclusive lead programs for our people so that they can get in front of far more people. Uh, face-to-face, uh, you know, each and every day and, and help them out. Uh, and then last is ownership. You know, I was in the business for 30 years where I never really owned anything. Um, I helped a lot of, uh, you know, several companies do very well, and I did very well uh, in the business, but I never owned anything really. And coming to American Senior Benefits, um, it's really about ownership. It's about coming in here and having our company help you uh, by giving the resources and, and the help that you need to be able to build something special for yourself and your family rather than uh, just kind of building it better for us. Yeah, you know, that's, you know, when I hear that, it's not like, oh, look how great we are and you need to come to us because, you know, you can be part of this great organization. It's how can we help you? And it's like the old uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., uh, you know, you know, help me help you. And I think that really is a huge opportunity when people realize um, everyone's favorite radio station is WIIFM. 
what's in it for me. And it's not what's in it for, <laughs> you know, you know, Greg or American senior benefits. It's what's in it for your team, your people that you're helping to serve, because in reality, then that has a ripple effect um, of how they then serve their community. Well, if everyone's happy, the end result, the, the client, the actual people that you're providing the benefits for, they're thrilled. Your team of uh, advisors and network of advisors are thrilled, and then everyone wins. And then that's how you have 17 years in a row of record growth. You're, you're hitting the nail on the head. I think it's really important from our standpoint. It's about giving, um, giving good people uh, the best resources so they can do their job, kind of getting the heck out of their way, and, and but being there for, for being there for them whenever they need something. So servant leadership is really what it comes down to. Uh, my favorite uh, trainer is, is in the leadership area is John Maxwell, and that's a big part of, of I think what we focus on as a company. Um, you know, Jim Sweeney, one of our managing partners, says, you know, always do what's right, you know do what's right every time, uh, you know, or do, or do things for the right reasons every time, and, and good things are going to happen. And, um, you know, it's the truth. And, and, and our other managing partner, Clay Leggett, you know, he's kind of the founder of putting people back in the people business. Um, yeah. I've never met, you know, two people who do it better. And, you know, if we can do that and really kind of, I don't want to say get out of the way, but give our people the best of, of, of everything that, that they can have to make themselves uh, successful in the business, they're going to do it because we have great people um, at every step of our organization from agent through management levels to our home office staff, we have great people. And if you give them the resources, they're going to do some magical stuff. Yeah. And, you know, when I hear servant leadership, yeah, that that sounds to me like it's a very broad cliche, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, we are. Um, so I want to ask, you know, what specifically does that mean to you? But it reminds me of some of these, you know, the undercover boss or the shark tanks and, and the shows where it's like, you know what, look at our CEO here. Um, here's him or her. Um, rolling up their sleeve. They're actually down in our hotel, you know, that we're running, and they're down there cleaning the toilet, showing the the staff how it needs to be done right. That's in a, in one example, just one small example of servant leadership, because it's not just crack the whip, do this because I said to do it. It's, look, here's how we all need to collaborate together. Come on, let's get going. And when you see the CEO and the leaders, you know, excited like that, you want to follow along. And it's not being pushed, you're being pulled. You're drawn to that vision and mission. So talk a little bit about what servant leadership means to you guys and then what that tr trickles over and flows over to your agents that you're serving. Um, great question as well. I, I think um, the thing that just first comes to mind for me is uh, it's not about title. It's about time. So oh, yeah. forget title. Let's talk about time. Uh, I don't care who you are. If you're an agent in the company or you're a manager in the company, you're somebody who needs help from home office. Um, it, it doesn't matter who it is. If they call me up and need help, I'm pretty much doing whatever I can to make sure uh, I'm able to help them. And so from a, a standpoint of put aside the titles. Uh, everybody here runs their own companies and runs their own business. And we are just um, the entity that, that gives them uh, the best opportunity to succeed. And so, you know, when we go to meetings, it's a bunch of friends getting together. It's not, yeah. and it's kind of unique and, and it, it really is special. And I think that from that standpoint, if we can just kind of put that, that the titles and all that aside, they mean nothing in the end, uh, other than, you know, you have to have them in, in a corporate environment. But at the end of the day, if we can just look at each other as, as you know, uh, partners in, in something special and trying to do the best we can to make sure that everybody has the best resources and the best opportunity, in the end, like I said, the results speak for themselves. Yeah. And, you know, don't you want to be part of an organization like that? So, I mean, you know, when you're uh, uh, working with your advisors and you're like, hey, we're not the only marketing organization that can come alongside you. There's a competitor or 12. I mean, there's plenty of people that do what you do. So you need to stand up out and stand apart. And many of the things you've mentioned here today is, is, you know, head and shoulders above where they're used to getting. So I love how you guys are positioned in what you're doing for your clients and your network. But some of these little smaller under the, you know, kind of like under the radar kind of things like the servant leadership, you don't really even get to experience that until you are just like engaged and all in. And then it's kind of like this confirmation, like I knew this felt right. And look at this. And so I think that really is something 
something where if we can kind of flip the script and kind of go, hey, look at what we're doing here. This is this is the the culture that we're creating internally, and it flows over to what we do with you for you, so that you can look like and be that you know trusted advisor to your clients. It just all goes together. It reminds me of um of one of my favorite books called um giftology. Have you ever read that by John Rulin? What is it again? I'm sorry. Giftology. No, I have super good book. book. Uh, John Rulin, R U H L I N. Um, and what you basically, it's just how do you strategic gifting um, in business and personal and all that. But one of the things that he was talking about is he goes, you know what? All of our employees, if all we did was say, here's how we need to love on and lavish um, on our strategic alliances, vendors, clients, process, all of that. And then we're treating our employees internally like, you know, uh, a number. Boy, that doesn't resonate. So he goes, we start with our team and we do all these things for them. We'll, you know, pay for having house cleaning for them every year. And, and we treat them like princes and kings and queens so that they feel appreciated so that when they work with our clients or prospects, that whole feeling transfers over. So I think that's what you're talking about here when, when it's the servant leadership the culture you know, someone, someone that says, you know what, a marketing organization that's like this, man, when I am in trouble or have a, uh, something I need to celebrate, either of the two, they're going to be right there with me and for me. So I, I really like that feeling that you guys are bringing to the industry. Well, you, you just said a, a key word, which to me is the most important thing we have here and that, and that we protect, and that is culture. Mike. Mm. So at the end of the day, when you look at most of our growth, from, from zero to 1,600 agents, 160 locations today. Uh, you know, last year, we, we wrote $214 million in premium. Um, I, when you look at what we've done, um, you know, in terms of that 17-year period, most of our growth of people is organic. And you know, it's, it's been a situation where um, it's word of mouth. It's people coming to us and reaching out because they see it, uh, they hear about it, and, you know, those th that brand recognition is now starting to become bigger and bigger as American Senior Benefits, you know, has continued to grow and has continued to work and maintain that culture while we've been growing. So that, that's harder. The bigger you yep. get, the harder it is to keep that culture yep. up. But we continue to work tirelessly to make sure that we do. Awesome. So um, being in the industry this many years, yourself, 37 years and, and since 2005 for, for your company, what are you seeing currently and where do you see things headed? And where I'm going with that is it just seems like um, way back in the day, I, I, so I'll date myself, I'm 54 and I remember my first year out of college, they had fax machines, which were so cool, but they used that thermal paper that when the fax came through, it would curl up and fall <laughs> down. It's like, man, those are, that's a million years ago. And now it's like, oh, look at how we communicate. Technology has moved and moved and moved. So when, you, when we think nowadays with what we've gone through with COVID and virtual and all of these things, I feel like that the virtual connectiveness that we were forced to do, now we might feel like, you know what, there were some elements of that that are really beneficial that help us conduct business quicker, faster, more efficiently. What are you seeing that is moving forward in the industry that is going to be something that you guys can come alongside your advisors and help them uh, succeed in? Uh, you, you know, there, there's a lot of things. I really believe one of the best things we did uh, is a couple of years ago, we partnered with Integrity Marketing Group, which is the largest, largest uh, market organization in America. And, you know, th through them and their resources and their outreach and, um, and everything, it's been able to help us also have additional resources. One thing I think is key uh, is, is that we will never not be the company, though, that's focused on putting people back in the people business. So we will always be a people-driven company mm -hmm. um, and, and focused on, on our clients, our agents, our, our, all of our, our organization. It's all about people first. So uh, the technology is going to continue to get better. It's going to continue to get bigger. Uh, the modernizing is going to be there. Um, you know, our hybrid model, I think, is the way of the future. Um, many, uh, obviously, I think you're going to see a lot of consolidation. It seems like the bigger organizations are, are kind of buying up the smaller ones. Um, the the uh, the old you know uh, captive world is is really struggling uh, from a standpoint of you know they're not able to to offer 
all the different types of resources and products that are out there today. And so I think you're going to see more and more people that are flocking to this type of model. Um, and, and I think that's, that's good for those who are thinking forward and are not kind of stuck in the, back, in the past. And along with that, though, I, I always want to keep in mind that nothing will ever take the place of whether it's a hot, you're in a, a, a situation where you're doing it virtual or face-to-face, nothing's ever going to change that this business comes down to one word, and that's relationships. It will always yeah. be a relationship business. So especially with us, we can work with clients 20 to 90, but we specialize um, you know, on working in the senior market. And so uh, there's a, a large growth there, you know, 10, 11,000 people a day turning 65, and they are living longer, they have needs, uh, we have uh, the solutions to all those needs, and so um, they're looking for relationships. And whether yeah. they wanna do it through a Zoom call or they want you at their kitchen table, yeah. we're gonna be there to help either yeah. way. It reminds me of like, um, you know, you hear B2B, business to business, and B2C, business to consumer. Well, I've heard a couple people recently are starting to say H to H, human to human. You know what? It really is the relationships like you just mentioned. It's like, you know what? I don't care if Greg is the account representative for a large company and he's working with Greg's still a human. And yeah, you might have a corporation behind you where we can tap into resources, but no matter what industry or whether it's an advisor or what, whatever the company is, it's a human interacting with another human. And how would they want to be treated because yeah like you said 20 to 90 well in the the prime demographic that you serve you know the 50 plus or or whatever the age demographic that way is there's a lot of skepticism and you know what treat don't treat me like a number talk to me explain things to me don't talk down to me but treat me like a human and create that relationship because like bob berg uh, the famous uh, author and and uh, speaker says you know all things being equal people want to do business with those that they know like and trust and that's kind of where it it kind of all stops you know i started in 1985 and that you know that is the same today as it was then so there are some things that just are staple items that are not going to change you know until we get to the point where you know you're selling robots so at this point (laughs) uh and i will tell you there's a lot of people in our market who do not first of all a lot of them are very um up to date with technology but they, they're still, uh, a lot of them are still old school and they want to know and shake hands with who they're doing business with and look them face yep. to face. And I yep. think that's crucial. You got it. And, and uh, my, one of my first jobs out of college was working at a bank and, and this was back in the uh, early 90s. And I remember distinctly toward that time when online banking started coming out and, and the word on the street was, oh, the banks are going to, no more banks, no more branches. And Nope. People still want to come in and meet with a human and talk to them. And then, and then, you know, maybe they're not coming in every Friday. Maybe they're coming in once a month, but they, they, you know, use the technology, but that you know, the, the, some of those staple foundational things is let's keep those relationships because who knows what that will develop over time. And, and then when you do it the right way, and, and now we can dive into another marketing lesson at some other time, but it's the lifetime value of a client. It's not just that Absolutely. one transaction. It's when you develop that relationship, what else could there be from an upsell, cross-sell, introduction, referral, longevity, all of that. It's not just that one thing, you know, oh, I'm only going to make this commission on this teeny product so pass. No, you treat them right and boy, you never know where that leads. So I just really like uh, you guys' approach um, on your relationships and your and your servant leadership. So it's been really a great conversation with you, Greg. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, if anyone listening to this would like to reach out and learn a little bit more about uh, what you guys do and, and in the industry, I just think it would be uh, well worth their time to see what American Senior Benefits provides. What's the best way that they can reach out and learn more? Uh, absolutely. I mean, they go to our website at uh, you know www.americanseniorbenefits.com. Um, and if they want to reach out also uh, to me on LinkedIn, um, I, I have a, a pretty good network on LinkedIn as well, and uh, they can see that it's, you know, it's Greg uh, Gelino, G-E-L-I-N-E-A-U. And uh, again, they can reach out, uh, connect, and uh, be happy to, uh, again, uh, connect with anybody that wants to when it comes to our opportunities here and, and uh, just in general about anything to do with business. Excellent. Well, great. Thanks so much for coming on. It was a real pleasure talking with you. 
Absolutely. Pleasure with, uh, with you as well, Mike, and uh, look forward to talking again. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.